everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts. Guys, the newest episode of Arrow, Arrow, Season 4, Episode 17, Beacon of Hope, just finished airing on TV, and I'm here to review slash just talk about the episode. If you've not seen the newest episode of Arrow, Beacon of Hope, click away now. I'm getting into spoilers for this episode. You have been warned. I'm getting into spoilers for this episode, Arrow, Season 4, Episode 17, Beacon of Hope. I'm getting into spoilers now, click away if you have not seen the episode, you have been warned. Okay, let's get into this episode, guys. So first things first, once again, the Arrowverse is kind of crossing over with the Walking Dead universe. Not really, but Emily Kinney from The Walking Dead is back once again now on Arrow because she originally appeared on The Flash Season 1 as Brie Larvin, and now she's back on Arrow Season 4, basically going after Felicity. And there's a whole other thing there because Felicity, when she first appeared on The Flash... Felicity showed up and actually helped Barry and the team def defeat Brie Larvin the first time. And so now there's a connection to her to come back. And we'll get to that in a little bit in a second. But seeing Emily Kinney back as Brie Larvin it was pretty cool. I don't remember her saying a lot of B-related puns on The Flash when she first appeared. But she had a lot of B um, puns, essentially. Uh, they were really cheesy really corny um some of them were okay and some of them were just like oh and that was really my only real negative with her character on this episode because the puns weren't really needed they just weren't really needed and she still said them and i was like Ugh, some of the times so if she comes back again let's not go with the b puns i don't remember it from season one of flash and if she did it must have not been that noticeable because I don't remember. But in this case, oh, it was just, some of them were just not good. But I really liked her character arc in this episode because you, you first start off seeing her on the computer in prison and she changes her date of release out of prison to like, I think that day or the next day or something like that, like very close. So she was supposed to get out in 2040 something or something like that or 2050 something she changed it to like literally a day or something after that that she was in the computer uh lab area at the prison um and then learning why she was going after felicity and why she was at palmer tech is because the nano chip the device that curtis made for felicity to walk again she wants it and there's no real reason why she just says i want that technology and if you don't, I'm going to kill all these board members with the, with the, the robotic bees. And then you learn later in the episode, which actually made me care for the villain a little bit, is the fact that she has a tumor uh, somewhere on her spine, and the only way to remove it is to have a surgery that will make her unable to walk again. So she wants that technology to remove the tumor, and then she can use that technology to keep her walking. Interesting point, so basically just wants to take it from Felicity, who needs it to walk, so she can walk. So it's kind of like, you know, hey, take it out, Felicity, I want it. And Felicity's like, nah, bruh, or nah, be crazy lady, I ain't letting you have it. So it's a pretty interesting dynamic to finally learn about that late in the episode, but you still learn about why she wants that technology. Um, and seeing her use her bees was pretty awesome, you know, once again, like from... Flash season one when she first appeared, she was behind a computer um, and controlling the bees that way. But in this episode, she wasn't really on a computer that much. She was actually controlling them, I guess, with some technology she has on her. I'm not really sure, but I like her her outfit too. It was kind of cool too. It was like some kind of goldish uh, type design with like hexagons or whatever, like bee uh, hive type shapes. I don't know what they're called. You know, I'm just I'm I've not been in school for quite some time, so you know. That word escapes me, but you know what I mean. So it was pretty cool to see that. You've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about. So it's pretty awesome to see that. Cool to see Brie Larvin. Hopefully she comes back again, and if she does come back again, because I do like saying Emily and Kenny in this universe, B puns, just take them and just put them away. <laughs> Don't say them again. So next thing I do want to talk about is Curtis. Okay, so Curtis had a big uh, role in this episode because... Finally, after all this time, Curtis finally finds out who the Green Arrow is, who the Black Canary is, who Spartan is, and knows that Quentin Lance is working with them and all this kind of stuff, and he finally learns everything. So apparently, he had a tracker that tracks them to where uh, where Oliver used to have his campaign and then found the secret elevator, and then there you have it. Um, at one point in the episode, which I felt bad for Curtis, is that Oliver gets really upset. And the only reason why he's getting so upset and yelling at Curtis is not so much that Curtis is like wanting a high five because they were able to stop 
the bees um, that were inside Oliver. I believe that, yeah, I believe that that was the right time when it happened. And Oliver just starts yelling at him saying, this is really serious, you know. And I think the reason why Oliver is getting so mad at Curtis is not because of that, because he's wanting, you know, to be positive. It's because he still loves Felicity and she's still in the building with uh, Brie Larvin. So obviously he's not having it. He wants to go save her and we haven't stopped it yet. So uh, that was um, a pretty interesting um, kind of choice they went with that. But ultimately, Green Arrow and Curtis... They ended okay, and Curtis did a lot of great help. He actually controlled the bees at a couple of different times of the episode. And what I forgot to mention were the Brie Bri, uh, Bri, Bri Larvin aspect was the fact that the bees formed a actual human being with armor on. It was really weird. Like, you don't see the, a person's face, but it's like a robotic creature that has, like, the bee design or whatever. And the bees create it. And so it has, it has something for Oliver to fight, essentially. So I have to, you know, give them credit for at least coming up with, oh, well, there's a bunch of, there's like thousands of robotic bees. What if they come together and create a, ro a robot that's like a bee thing, and he's like a big thud guy, and he can, you know, he, he punches slow, and he hits slow, but Oliver's got something to fight instead of a bunch of random flying things. So at least they came up with something for Oliver to fight, besides just a bunch of random, you know, like robotic bees flying around everywhere, so... I'm glad they came up with a way to do that. Uh, but seeing Curtis was pretty awesome. The next thing I do want to talk about is actually just the fact that they're doing training scenes. The fact that they were actually doing something in this episode. Because last episode, Broken Hearts, I believe was what it's called. The one with Cupid in it. The, the last week's episode. Wasn't really a fan of that episode. I mean, there were some good moments with the court stuff. But I mean... Ah, it just it could have been it could have been handled a lot better. But for this episode, they start off immediately with Oliver, Diggle, Thea, and Laurel all training at the same time with these like batons. And they're just like going crazy and shit. And you can tell it's not them because it's obviously stunt people. But you you know it's like it's impl implied they are training. Oliver is training them, and, and then you see a one on one with Oliver and uh, Diggle, John Diggle, and then going at it and Oliver obviously comes out on top but it's cool to see them training and then at another point you see Oliver do like this uh, I forget what it's called like a it's like a it's like a I don't know what it's called I'm not even gonna try to explain what I'm not gonna try to explain you know what I'm talking about if you've seen the episode and you should have if you're watching this review and Oliver's doing the whole that thing he's done like he's done that for so much in the first two seasons of Arrow and I'm glad that he's back like hitting this thing and he's hitting in all different directions basically learning how to block and attack and maneuver and all this kind of stuff it's pretty awesome to see these scenes to see him training because we've seen episodes where they come back from their um them going out and like you know with, with their suits on and nothing happens and they don't show that scene they, they show them coming back and they're not really out there doing anything so it's kind of like show some action so they actually did in this episode in a very cool way so there is that last thing i do want to cover is andy diggle man andy diggle is apparently going to be working with hive who is now working with freaking Merlin. I don't know what's going to happen with this. I mean, what the hell is going on? I don't know. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But that was a nice little tease for when we actually get back. Because we're apparently going on another freaking break. But anyways, I like that I like that little reveal at the end. So there you have it, guys. That is the uh, that's my review for the episode. Pretty it was a pretty good episode. Way better than last week's episode. A lot of great fighting, some great training. Um, Brie Larvin back, uh, portrayed by Emily Kenny. Awesome stuff. So what more do, what more you can say? So there you have it, guys. That's my review. Thank you so much for watching my review of this episode. Peace out, guys.